Hey everybody, make sure you have these notes. Um, fill in please the name and the date and period so we can give you credits for this. Um, one of the biggest problems we have when we're simplifying and we're distributing is kids really get confused with the negatives. So I thought we'd spend today's notes on negatives. And I want you to remember that if we're distributing a negative number, the negative sign indicates, oops, I hit the wrong button. Okay. The negative sign indicates the opposite of the number. That's what you really need to remember. So write that down. Basically, it means anything in the parentheses is going to be the opposite of what it was before. So let's just practice. Remember way back to the beginning of the year when you used to tell me what the opposites were. And it says list the opposite of each of the terms below. Take a minute, pause the video, and practice writing the opposite of each of these terms below. Go ahead and pause. This is what you should have written. Negative 8, positive 5, negative x, 3x, negative 1, and 9x. Okay? So keep that in mind as we move on. When distributing a negative number, you must find the opposite of each term within the parentheses. So if we have a negative number outside of the parentheses, only when you have a negative number outside the parentheses, that means you have to take the opposite of each term within the parentheses. Okay, so we're going to practice that right now. Take a look at, let me see if I can use my highlighter. Okay, so if you take a look, I have negative 2, and I'm distributing it to G, and then I'll distribute it to 5. So the first thing we need to do is identify the opposites. G is positive, so guess what my answer is going to be? Negative. 5 is positive, so when I get done distributing, it will be a negative or a minus sign in between them. And here we go. This is negative 2G, because I multiplied negative 2 times G, and I got negative 2G. And remember what we said, 5 is positive, so if I'm multiplying by negative 2, I'm going to get minus. I'll get the opposite. So 2 times 5 is 10. The opposite of plus is negative, so it's minus 10. In this problem, again, we're going to make it opposite. Negative 2 times negative g. Well, it's a negative g, so the opposite of negative g is positive g. Negative 2 times 5, this is a positive. So 2 times 5 is 10, but the opposite of a positive is a negative. So I should have positive 2g minus 10. Okay, let's go down to the number 3. I have positive g, which means negative 2 times positive g is going to give me negative 2g. And negative 2 times 5, negative 5, this is going to be treated as negative 5. Negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. Now, another way you can look at it is I know 2 times g is 2g, and the opposite of this positive g is negative, so it's going to be negative 2g. 2 times 5 is 10. The opposite of a negative is a positive, so when I get done, I'm going to have negative 2g plus 10. Let's try number 4. Okay, I want you to notice everything in these parentheses is negative, so what do you think we're going to have in our answer? Positives. So 2 times g is negative, or I'm sorry, 2 times g is 2g, but because I'm multiplying by negative, I'm going to have a positive 2g. 2 times 5 is 10. This was negative. The opposite of a negative is positive. I should have positive 2g plus 10. And I want you to notice, this. Will, the question says below, what do you notice about all of the problems above? Well, I want you to notice that they're all 2g's and they're all 10's. But notice, the only thing that's different is if the g was positive, now it's negative. If the g was positive, it's now negative. If the g was negative, it's now positive. If the g was negative, it's now positive. If the 5 was positive, it's now negative. If the 5 was positive, it's now negative when I multiply by negative 2. It was negative, now it's positive. It was negative, now it's positive. Okay? Let's try a bunch of these. Simplify the expressions by distributing the negatives and combining like terms. Okay, so this is a negative. 
So 5 times 2x is going to be 10x, but because this was positive, my answer will be negative. Let me just show you. So it's negative 10x. Now 5 times 9 is 45. I always do the multiplying first, and then I figure out what the sign is. It just helps me. So 5 times 9 is 45, but the opposite, this makes it an opposite, of a positive 9 is going to be negative. That's why it's minus. Minus and negative, same thing. You're losing them, okay? In this one, again, this is negative being multiplied by a positive. So this is the first term in the parentheses is positive. We have to do the opposite. So 2.5 times 4, I believe, is 10, or 1.0 in this case, I guess. No, it's 10. Oh, my gosh, what am I thinking? So it's 10, but it's going to be a negative 10K. This is negative 2, so it's going to be a positive, or positive um, product. So 2.5 times 2 is 5, negative, and a negative makes a positive. Okay, let's review this a little bit. Whenever I have a fraction outside the parentheses, or anytime I have a fraction that I'm multiplying, to take a half of this stuff is really like dividing the things in parentheses by what? Two. Take a half of it. Half of six is going to be three. This was a positive six t, so I know my answer is going to be negative three t. This is a positive two. Half of two is one. It's positive, so I know it's going to be negative, and here's my answer. Negative 3t minus 1. See if you can try this one before I start talking nonstop. So this is negative 4. My answer will be positive when I get done. So let's do the multiplication. 10 times 4 is 40. It should be positive. 2 times 10 is 20. Because it's a subtraction, it's going to become plus. Here we go. 40 plus 20j. Pause the video, please, and try the next one on your own. Pause it. Pause it. Your answer should be positive 3p minus 21. Number 10. This is a positive 6, so your first term should end up being negative. The second term is negative, so the second term should end up positive. Pause this video, please. Pause it. And... Try it yourself. And the answer should be negative 12d plus 22. Okay, we're moving on. We have word problems to do. Okay, use your knowledge of simplifying expressions. Now, number 11, I wanted you to see, it says write an expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. Perimeter means I'm going to add this side and this side to this side and this side. So I have two of each of these. I have two of 3x minus 2. Here we go. I wrote it there. And two of x plus 6, which I wrote there. So now I need you to distribute everything. And if you notice, we're not distributing a negative here. It's a positive, so it's not really going to change any of the signs. So go ahead. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 6 is 12. In this case, 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 2 is 4. It's a subtraction sign. My second row should look like this. 2x plus 12 plus 6x minus 4. Now, what we need to do is, again, this is like what we learned on Monday and Tuesday. We're going to look for the like terms, which in this case I see 2x's and I see 6x's. We're going to start with our x's. 2x and 6x is 8x, and 12 minus 4 is 8. So we should have 8x plus 8. Excellent. Number 12, it says determine the distance between points A and B if A to C is 10x minus 5. So that means we know the distance from here all the way to here. And we know that distance is 10x minus 5. So I need to take 10x minus 5 and I need to subtract from this this whole thing. So this is what it looks like. 10x minus 5, that's the entire length. That's this entire length. Now I'm subtracting this part from B to C. Okay, this part is gets, gets tricky. There's a negative on the outside. So that means everything on the inside is going to become positive. Here we go. I'm sorry. Oh, 
oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? It's not going to become positive. It's going to become the opposite. This was positive 2x. Now it's negative 2x. This was positive 7. It's now negative 7. Do you see any like terms? Yes, you see 10x and you see negative 2x. Negative 2x. So 10x minus 2x is 8x. Negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12. So you should have 8x minus 12. Sorry about that. It is late at night. Okay, number 13. The expression below represents the area of the rectangle. So in other words, this part right here is the area. We have to try to figure out what are some possible side lengths. So like what could this side be and what would this side be? So really what we're looking for are numbers that go into 12 and 6. So hmm. 6 could go into both of them, right? So that could be one of the sides. So if I pulled out a 6, 6 times what is 12? 2. 6 times what is 6? 1. So I wonder, oh, look at that. 6 times 2x plus 1. That should give us 12x plus 6, right? Because 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 1 is 6. There's another thing I could do, too. I mean, I think 3 goes into both of those. I don't know if you could see this. I'll wait because it pops up. But anyway, if I take a 3 out of both, oh, in this case, okay, sorry, we took out 2. So 2 goes into 12 6 times, so it's 6x. 2 goes into 6 3 times, so there's a 3 there. And then the last possible answer would be the 3. If we pulled the 3 out, we would get 4x plus 2. We just did the reverse distributive property, factoring. Number 14 is the same kind of problem. It says the expression below represents the area of the rectangle. What are the possible side lengths of the rectangle? I want you to try it the same way we did the first one in number 13. Pause the video. See if you can figure out what are some factors of 8 and 24. Okay? I hope you pause the video. Here are some solutions I have. These are three different options you could have used. Because 8 is a factor, 2 is a factor, and 4 is a factor. Okay, good luck. We're going to practice some more of this.